Welcome back, watch fans. Today I've got a, a Zodiac Desert Falcon. <clears throat> uh, now this this watch is kind of interesting. It is uh, actually a very nice watch, uh, but it was given to me by a friend, uh, and I offered to fix it for him. Uh, you can see it's not working. I haven't torn into it yet, so I don't know. Uh, it could just be a simple battery, or it could be... Um, actually needs an entirely new movement. I assume it's a Swiss movement because it is a Swiss watch. Uh, so I don't know, but we'll, uh, we'll look into it. Uh, so again, this is the Desert Falcon uh, Z04510 with Mother of Pearl. That is the, uh, the particular movement. And I'll just go over a couple facts because this is going to be more of a repair video. It's going to be done in two parts. Uh, of course, for you, it'll be one video, but I have to I have to order the movement so <clears throat> uh, just I'm just literally gonna read verbatim some stuff I wrote down uh, the company was founded back in 1882 in Le Lo Lo Locli, Switzerland I guess I'm, I'm probably saying that really wrong uh, although the name zodiac wasn't officially used until 1908 uh, zodiac is well known for their deep sea watch models such as the sea wolf and marine life they are currently owned by fossil. Uh, after a number of acquisitions and mergers throughout most of the 1990s. Now, this is a ladies' watch. You can see, uh, I think the case size is uh, fairly small, but um, it is still a very nice watch. It'd be kind of cool if they had a men's version of this, although I guess Mother Pearl isn't pretty common. Um, you know, it says it's about 34, 34 millimeters. Lug width looks like it's probably about... What is this 18 yep mm, yeah, I'm gonna say 18 and uh, the size what maybe 12 11 good solid 11 um, 100 meter water resist that's 230 feet um, this is obviously a mineral crystal because it is scratched generally speaking with a sapphire it's really hard to to actually scratch that so uh, MSRP for this watch was $229. Um, the case is stainless steel. Uh, and I think that's pretty much it. So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and get into it. And so I'm going to be doing a lot of fast forwarding because I'm sure you guys don't want to sit here while I'm taking things apart. But I do at least want you to see as I work through it. So let's get started. All right, so I open this up, and the first thing I see is that there is no watch battery. So um, I have to assume <clears throat> that uh, they either tried to install one at some point, but uh, I guess we'll see. So it's actually a it's a nice movement. It's a, I don't know if you guys can see really well. It's a Ronda, uh, probably like a five thirteen or, or something like that. I, and it's actually Swiss made too, so it's not Swiss parts. And it's all made in Switzerland. Um, so unfortunately, I don't know what kind of watch size that is, but I think it says... It. Oh, gosh, I'm going to have to use my magnifying glass. I don't know if you guys can see, but it actually, I believe it says it... Let me see if I can zoom in with this. That'd be pretty sweet. No, I don't think it works that way. All right, let's see if we can try and find out, find out what kind of movement this is. Um, usually Rhonda has this printed somewhere on the base, usually around where the battery goes. So since the battery's out, we can take a look. All right, so right here it says 773. So I will have to now go try and look uh, for movement to see if that's one of the ones that I have. Um, but... Uh, Yep, yeah, shouldn't be too hard to look for. I think we just need to go on Esslinger and Caliber Corner to try and identify it. And I'm expecting the price to be probably around twenty to thirty dollars. So, so we'll see.
Oh, totally dead. Seventeen point five Rhonda and Swiss made. All right, so that's it for this portion of the video. Um, all I'm gonna do is clean uh, the parts and I'm going to order movement. So um, I'm going to disassemble it at some point, but uh, I will wait until the new parts come in because no point in me taking this apart and having the parts sit around. So, all right, uh, see you guys in two weeks. All right, watch fans. Um, parts just came in from Esslinger, so pretty excited. Uh, I'm going to make this video really quick. Uh, I know, I know um, some of you prefer that, and others may want it to be a little bit longer. But I'm going to be speeding up a lot of this. Um, I have another video which I will put at the top, uh, where I spend a little bit more time going through. Uh, movement, renovations, and fixes. So we'll see. Um, oh gosh. Hopefully this is the right movement. What did I do? I would be pissed. Oh good. Alright, this is the right side. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and uh, like I said, most of this is going to be sped up. I'm I'm going to add in some comments, but this will be at four times speed. Um, if you, you know, like I said, if you want to see more, uh, please look at the, uh, the longer video that I did, which uh, is at the top. <clears throat> um, I'm going to be rushing through this because I've basically already done it before, but I will still add some comments in and talk about what I'm doing. All right, first thing I'm going to do is uh, put some finger columns on. You know, I don't care so much, of course, of the older movement, but um, when I start working on the new one, you don't want that to get messed up. So, that is what it is. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is take the old movement out. You know what? I just did a faux pas. It's supposed to align the hands. So let's do this over. I'm sorry, it's been a while. All right. I'm going to need to align the hands because I'm going to be taking them out. So I'm going to align them to the second hand, make it easy. There we go. All right. This is a very inexpensive tool. It works well. Sometimes I use uh, I use this. If I have a hard time getting it off, I'll use that. But this works just as well. Well, that's that. Now we have to see how this is attached. So we'll look very carefully. I don't see any screws that attach it. I see pins right here and there's one right there. Although that one looks like, yep, right there. So I see little slots. I don't know if you can see it, little slots there. So you can pull it out. So what I'll do is I'll use this. I'm just gonna pry a little bit gently to get it off. 
like I said, you know, I'm, I'm a little rough with this one because I don't care, right? The only thing I'm trying to really protect here is the, uh, the face. You don't want the face to get damaged. You don't really care about the movement because it's bad. All right, now what I want to be careful of is if there's any additional pieces that I need. And I don't think there are. So this, I want to put this here for safekeeping. And we'll look, oh, that doesn't, again, doesn't matter. Throwing that out. You go look at the new one. We want to compare before we put any real effort into installing it. I want to make sure that they are all correct. They're the same. And honestly, that looks identical to me. And it even comes with a new battery, so I don't even have to mess with that. We're now at 364. All right. There, it's at a perfect 90 degrees. And check for gap, no gap, okay, we're good. <clears throat> I'm gonna put this on to give it some, some balance. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the hands on Nice clean sweep. I want I want to do a full 360, full 24 hour movement because I do not want to see this hit. Perfect. All right. Now I'm going to put on the second hand. All right, and since the battery is already in here, we can test it. Perfect. Look at that. That is fantastic. <clears throat> Sorry, I got my glasses on. I keep hitting it, but like I said, you want to see how this is done? Do it with the other other video I pointed out. Now, what I want to do though, I want to make sure this does not hit. Very important for me. You don't want this to hit because. Well, then it, you didn't do a good job. All right. All right, good. Now, before I engage that, I want to clean this case. I don't feel like disassembling it, but it does need cleaning. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to actually stop this, and I'm going to clean it, and then I'll be back. All right, I'm back. Um, you notice there's still a couple scratches. I'm not going to replace the crystal. Uh, it's, I didn't account for it. Don't have one. Um, not too important to me. But um, I did clean this. Make sure you also use a hair dryer to really, really get it dry. Um, 
the last thing you want to do is put the movement in and uh, <laughs> have it uh, be bad. Now, before I put the movement in, I want to measure this uh, O-ring, this one right, right here. Uh, I'm not likely to reuse it because it's been crushed and that would be irresponsible to reuse it, but I do want to measure this. Okay, so I've got a good 28, so that's what I'm gonna end up using. I'm gonna put in there, I'll do that later. So now I'm going to carefully place this on. <laughs> Let's try that again. I'm going to carefully place this on and I will move it around because what you don't want is for it to bind. By having it slowly on there, it can properly seat. You'll want to look all the way around. It's a little bit tight on there, see? You want to look all around that it's not pinching and sticking out. And you want to make sure you work it back and forth like that. What you don't want is for it to pinch. Right, that's good. Um, I think that's it. So now I just need to um, clean the straps, and so I will do that, and then I'll clean up. So um, I'm going to, before I do anything else, I'm just going to drop these right into <clears throat> into the cleaner, and then uh, we'll start cleaning up. All right, I'm time for some weak coffee. Oh, that's cold. All right, <clears throat> as soon as the ultrasound cleaner's done, we'll put the straps on. All right, uh, I just got them the strap out of the ultrasound cleaner and ready to put them on. <clears throat> so I remember what it looks like and uh, this this always goes on the top so
All right, <clears throat> ready to go back to the customer. This is typically how you would get it. Oh, I gotta set the time. What kind of watch repair aficionado would I be if I wasn't actually fixing, setting the time? There we go. All right, so normally um, most watch shops will give it back to you like this. Um, although usually they don't give you this stuff um, because there's a markup. I'm not giving a markup. But um, <clears throat> some of the things that, my ha that they might do, see this, it's a little bit worn. This is from, you know, when somebody's got the watch on and it's, it's rubbing up against there. They might polish that out uh, and polish all these individual links. Uh, Rolex would typically do that, so would uh, Omega. Um, and with this scratch crystal, which you can't really see when you've got them with a pearl on there, um, they might replace that crystal as well. This is obviously not a, a um, sapphire because it's scratched, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. Uh, this watch wasn't working and now it's got a new movement, $38 later. Uh, not much more you can ask for <clears throat> unless you wanted to put the money into it and it wouldn't, I don't know, be worth it. It's a nice watch. Uh, so I think it's belongs to his wife, so. All right, there you go. If you enjoyed this video, please uh, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more, then check out my other videos and subscribe. And if you have any comments about how I very quickly and hurriedly fixed this watch, uh, please leave comments in the comment section below. Thank you very much.